Hey neighbor, welcome back to Year End Countdown Season on ARTV. My name is John, and today I'll be counting down my top 50 favorite songs of 2020. It was a surprisingly bright year for music despite the heaviness of the world around us, and I just kept finding more and more and more diamonds in the rough, which made this process even harder to narrow down than usual. In order to show as much variety as possible, I limit the picks to one song per artist. And also, if you're new to the channel, hi, I'm definitely more of a rock, alternative, and pop fan, but that doesn't mean that you won't find any rap, indie, or metal on the countdown. I fully admit my bias towards the genres that I do love the most, so keep that in mind while watching, and feel free to comment away with your thoughts on my selections and maybe some of your favorite tracks of the year too. You know you're gonna find new songs in this video, so why not toss me a follow on Spotify and save the top 50 playlist I made to your own library? Both links are in the description down below, so with all of the pre-rambled necessities out of the way, please take a split second to like this video, it truly helps support the channel, and subscribe for the love of music. When movements bring the heavy, they bring the win. Their frontman lets some sincere screams rip along with the searing burn the chorus leaves in the wake of the domineering guitar and drum performances. You feel the impact of his ongoing struggle with mental health, and I really dug the metaphor of going into the trenches to essentially fight off the shadows, and if you're into post-hardcore or rock at all, this was the best and hardest hitting song on their second album. Code Orange are a vivid, unique, metalcore punk band in the sense that the label I just hit them with doesn't even really come close to pinning the tail on the genre. Swallowing the rabbit hole is a warped insomniac's mind resurrected for the digital age, a monster whose teeth sink in like razors in the midst of thrashing drums and manic growls. The mix is intentionally loud as fuck, but somehow you get a sense of dark tranquility along the way, with producer Will Yep once again letting his talent shine as this band continues to evolve. Could this song be any more appropriate? Call me Chandler Bing because oh my god. Canadians just do it better guys, I swear. Pup can't seem to miss and they're doing it all without really throwing that many curveballs. It's more of adding finesse to the great chemistry they've already got flowing. You always in the mood, fuck around like I'm brand new. I ain't trying to tell you what to do, but try to play cool. Mood is the first mainstream chart topper to crack my best list in a while, but it's such a smorgasbord of viral catchiness, I just couldn't let it go. The two artists have a silky smooth flow with fun lyrics that poke holes in a relationship while also finding time to wallow in sadness between flexes. From day one, I knew Meet Me at the Altar had something special with their intelligent blend of pop punk and heavier guitars. Garden slaps any which way you spin it, whether it's the vibrating bass that sounds so rich as it fills your speaker, or the driving vocals from their frontwoman Edith Johnson. She's a powerhouse for the genre, and to be honest, it's so incredibly refreshing to see the doors opening for not only women, but also people of color in a scene that's traditionally been white as Fuck. I expected a warning. I expected your voice in a crowded room. All alone in the morning. All these questions were leading me back to you. Tiger's Jaw returned to save the day in a dismal year, and I can honestly say this is one of the rays of light that helped me pull through. They never miss, and although this is on the brighter side of their sound musically, they perfected the plot twist of sunny guitars paired with dark passengers hiding in the lyrics. On top of all of that, you've got a killer drum performance and some really strong vocal harmonies with a classic Tiger's Jaw guitar tone that's gonna have you begging for more. I grab your hand and then we run out the car Singing in the street and playing air guitar Stuck between my teeth just like a candy bar And I wonder if it goes too far Halsey finished her complete flipping of the tables to put me in a position I never thought I'd see when I first talked about her music in 2015. She did it and taped my mouth shut in the process, and finally Beautiful Stranger remains my favorite song from Manic. It's a stunning tune, and her voice floats so crisply in the mix, balancing out the smiling guitars with a blast of romance. 
To me, it sounds like she was writing about someone very special in her life that made her let go of some of her past cynicism based on old relationships. She talks about having her fists up, but then kind of lowering them. It's habitual for her to do that, but she lowers them to just be free with someone that accepts her for who she is with all of her flaws. Teenage wrist are thriving despite the multiple changes in their lineup. You love to see it in this latest banger, Earth is a Black Hole, sounds like a healthy mix of Jimmy Eat World meets 90s rock, a total match made in heaven. The chorus is a live wire you can't help but shout along with, and while the guitar tone is definitely something I'm digging, even higher praise goes out to that drumming that absolutely steals the show, with that little breakdown at the end serving as the cherry on top of the sundae. Blasting the rocket boosters clearly worked for Enter Shikari as the Great Unknown explodes into space on the back of massive sounding sci-fi synthesizers. Rao Reynolds sounds incredible, hitting high notes, being versatile, just all around king shit which is really impressive given the band's consistent evolutionary arc. There's a lot to sink your teeth into as the suspense teeters on the brink of something huge, taking you all the way there and never leaving a dull moment in the process. Now I got a gas mask when I make dope. I done seen a lot of OGs catch a table habit trying to taste dope. I just got another case smoke. Something's in the water, and as fate would have it, it's veteran rapper Freddie Gibbs and the acclaimed producer The Alchemist going straight for the throat on the aptly titled Frank Lucas. That name probably sounds familiar considering Lucas was a famous drug kingpin decades ago, and here Gibbs and his guest Benny the Butcher serve up the hard knock life over a watery beat full of booming bass and unsettling keys. Someone was listening to Oasis in the studio, and you are not going to catch me complaining. Boston Manor had blossomed out of pop punk perfectly, and it's hard not to feel like a proud dad watching them grow and explore. Plasticine Dreams conquers the 90s alt-rock scene with a calm, cool, and collected hook that floats like a cloud, morphing and changing shapes while adding in some snarky commentary to make things even better. Trivium kicked 2020's ass 10 times over with the metal band's own What the Dead Men Say serving as the battering ram to open the floodgates. Meaty riffs make use of some pinch harmonics while throwing gasoline on an already raging fire, and I just really love how domineering Matt Heafy's vocals hit. They've aged insanely well as a unit and can still whiplash you with their sound, and songs like this prove how drummer Alex Bent really helped breathe new life into the band. <laughs> Built off of warped bass lines and ill-tempered mood swings against the upper class, punk band idols throttled the fuck out of me with reins. They hook you with a quick groove that swerves about madly before Joe Talbot enters the chat with his instantly recognizable presence behind the mic. Leaving a gap for oxygen in between bursts of fire keeps the suspense growing despite the repetitive nature of the lyrics, but it's hard to deny how much of a searing impact they leave when the guitar-centric hook pops out of the closet like a monster. Retro pop rock with a California lens flare is pretty much Beach Bunny in a nutshell. April is a misty-eyed metaphor used to usher in a new season of emotions, and I adore the vocal enigma that so earnestly nestles up close to your heart. If you're looking for something that balances the line of indie rock and surf pop, this is a must hear. <laughs> Oh yeah, shouty pout emo gang, where you at? I get that this style of rock isn't for everyone, but good lord, I couldn't get enough of this hot mulligan cut. Equipped sunglasses is ridiculously easy to latch onto, grabbing power-ups as it races through the city with fiery guitars and stern lyrical revelations showing themselves throughout that shape-shifting chorus. 
Catching fire would maybe be a simpler way to put it, but words are fun, okay? Just ask Hot Mulligan, most of their song titles are basically a short story. The Front Bottoms have consistently moved in a different direction over the past decade, much to the chagrin of their folkier Day One fans, but I honestly think Montgomery Forever beautifully married all of their explorations into one song. In fact, I'd call this one a barn burner, given how life-affirming that hook feels as they blow the roof off with blissful gang vocals and jubilant guitars. Guitars are a massive part of why I'm so addicted to it. They open things with a romping riff that carries the tune high on the wings of eagles, only to swoop back down to earth as Brian Sella tells a tale in the most front bottoms of ways you could ever imagine. Miley's disco pop rock maneuver proved to be the best lever she's pulled in her career to date. Her smoking voice was built for rock and roll, plus my mantra has essentially been, let's scream about how Miley should have been a rock star until she actually does it. So with Midnight Sky effortlessly breezing down the 80 synth filled highway, I can finally die happy. Shimmering synths echo emotion from deep within the Caves of Real Love song, a massive tune that really made me remember why I love this band so much. Connor Mason twists his anguish into words that surround the ear like heart palpitations, leaving you on edge but satisfied each time the chorus rolls around. That then gives way to those watery guitars that stir up a lot of feelings. Kind of like seeing a rainbow on a cloudy day, it reminds us that love is imperfect and fleeting. Ground yourself and allow your heart to be patient. If there was ever a song that pinned down the feeling of being antsy, on edge, just waiting around for something to happen, it would probably be Tap the Pack. Slutface are an awesome Norwegian band that blend elements of pop punk and 90s rock for a sound that just really satisfies the taste buds. This song in particular really captures everything they do best in a bottle, including fun choppy riffs, breezy atmospheres that hit like daydreaming in a heat wave, and of course Haley Shay's riveting voice that really gives the lyrics a huge breath of life. I just can't waste my life only holding on for another one. Belmont are a band I've consistently seen as having a finger directly on the pulse of what's next for their scene. Hideout tosses together squealing guitars, fuzzy feedback, and a hazy sense of self-hatred staring back in the mirror as the night gives way to the morning sun. It's a chilled out headbanger with a toasty ass breakdown that just soothes the soul man. What more could you want from the boys? It's hard not to get excited about Kenny Hoopla, given the trajectory of his breakout single, How Will I Rest in Peace If I'm Buried by a Highway. Dance punk with a huge block party influence could trick you into believing this dropped in the 2000s. It's even got the extremely long title for a fitting ode to an era in music that I hold so close to my heart. This guy is gonna be huge. The new single, Estella, is a massive tune featuring Blink-182's own Travis Barker. Put him on your radar if you haven't done so already. New Zealand seems like the place to be in such a mortifying year. You've got a country that actually took the virus seriously, and a gym of a band like the Beths able to tour their homeland playing these fantastic new songs live. My personal favorite from their sophomore album was the peppy opening track that features a buzzing guitar propelling things forward like a portable generator. Frontwoman Elizabeth Stokes downplays the idea of success going to her head as the title I'm Not Getting Excited would imply, and they really make use of great backing vocals and a fantastic sense of rhythm. It's two things that you'll come to love as you get to know the Beths, and believe me, you need to get to know them. And 
to think this band didn't click for me on my first listen. Psh, can't relate John from ARTV. Who's that guy? This guy loves some Polaris. How could I not? I mean, they stand out from the pack of generic metalcore bands easily because of their ambition and their ability to reinvigorate their sound by adding in elements of post-rock. Vagabond catapulted to the forefront because of how gnarly but cleanly it throws a punch. You've got a wicked guitar solo sounding timeless, aggressive but emphemic instrumentation, dueling vocalists that harmonize and trade off insanely well, plus a real sense of vitality that keeps the song from having any sort of expiration date. Summer 2020 saw me becoming enamored with Biffy Clyro, a Scottish rock trio that have evolved significantly over the years, yet I was only vaguely familiar until my reintroduction through this very single Weird Leisure. They once again commit to odd time signatures and flaming hooks, allowing for a very unique tone. You just want to hit the replay button to see exactly how they built the structure of the song. Everything's locked in, eyes on the prize, tight as hell production. It's snappy but stern and checks all the boxes before eventually hitting that exit door. Wake up, sunshine. Somebody loves you for yourself. The titular moment from All Time Low's bounce back album Wake Up Sunshine is simply stellar. They realign their best qualities, which includes writing strong verses that masterfully give way to a lights out chorus, in addition to fun summary guitars that back the relatable words coming to life by way of mouth from their frontman Alex Gascarth. His voice never gets old to me, and I was so happy to see them take a huge win with this record, with the title track sounding like a victory lap to let us all know they've still got plenty of gas left in the tank. How exactly does a band release one of their best songs on their worst album? Don't know, but also don't care because I'm absolutely not too shy to let you know that this ranks at number 25 on my Best of 2020 countdown. Blaring saxophones fuse nicely with a stable 80s synth line, but it all still feels very appropriate under the 1975's umbrella. The music spirals through the space-time continuum in a long-winded intro, but there's an actual climax that culminates in a lush-sounding hook, driven home graciously through the eyes of Matt Healy's affectionate online lust. You've got to give it up for Trophy Eyes. They broke free of a more aggressive hardcore sound for something much, much cleaner back in 2018, only to double down on those expansions here instead of caving to fan pressure to bring back their older style. Their singer John Florini radiates pure, unbridled joy on what might possibly be the chorus of 2020. I just really fucking needed this song in a very tough year, and it makes total sense that it was my most streamed track of 2020. Dogleg are your next favorite emo punk band, thank me later, but Kawasaki Backflip was a defining moment from their debut album that hits harder and harder the longer you sit with it. Thrashing drums crash through the speaker to keep you fully engaged with the music at hand, something the rest of the guys clearly do well too given that it's so high up on the list. The whole album is just absolutely a must here, but you're not going to find a better introduction to the band than this. It hits so hard, everything about it from the drumming, the guitars, the vocals, it's full Fully gripping, and you're not gonna want to let go. Might just turn around to 180. I ain't politic and I ain't kissing no baby. She devil on my doorstep being so shady. Hands down, one of the best instrumentals to catch my attention this year found a home on the late Mac Miller's Blue World. One half of the production duo Disclosure produced this beat, and it's so vivid and trippy. Chopped and screwed vocal samples line the walls of the track, and Max sounds genuinely at ease with his really contagious flow. It's easily one of the best hooks he ever cut, and it breaks my heart to know that he's no longer with us on Earth, but I hope that he's found peace. I hope he's found happiness, carefree in a blue world with a big blue slide park. This was definitely not on my bingo card for 2020, but uh, praise the system, they're fucking back! 
Of course, the circumstances under which they've returned were not positive. The new songs were created to raise money and awareness for their home country of Armenia, and I'm stoked that they could put their differences aside for such a good cause. Genocidal humanoids somehow sounds like they never left. This is straight out of the system playbook, with thunderous bolts of guitar fire and some truly angry vocals from Surge as well as Darren. Every member of the band brought their A-game for this, and while it might not be one of their defining tracks of all time, it is absolutely worth your listen. Kicking drum machines fire away and I love the subtle bass touches throughout, Damon really captured something special here. And to have Peter freaking Hook from New Order bring in the heat too? They're impossible not to adore. It's 80s synth magic with a bit of that gorilla's touch and it's one of their most special creations to date. Laying down a catchy keyboard-centric melody to shape the skeleton of your song is bold, but then again, this is Kevin Parker we're dealing with, and we're dealing with a damn Australian musical genius! He gifts us a perky bass groove and twinkling keys on Breathe Deeper, a massive standout from the slow rush that feels like the perfect continuation of the current era. Around four and a half minutes in, the light tropical vibe swerve lanes, momentarily cool off, and then swirl back in with these grimy synths that will be permanently attached to your frontal lobe like an amoeba. Gotta show some love to the first song that I fell in love with in 2020, and that would be the sultry How to Get What You Want by the insanely talented Elise Trow. You might recognize her name from those live looping videos she does. Those are incredible. Absolutely check them out if you haven't seen them. But she's also got some great original music, with this being another shining star example. She plays every instrument herself, pouring in a tempered flavor pack to back this jaded sense of confidence driving the overall narrative. I'm excited for more solo music on the horizon, but for now, I'm content to keep this single in pretty heavy rotation. Sometimes, sometimes. Harry Styles is such a treat to watch. He's brought a very retro look and sound to the mainstream, and I love him for that. Sunflower Volume 6 is such a lovely, happy song with warm guitars, carefree melodies, and tasteful uses of the organ and pepper drumming throughout. Right from the opening line, Sunflower, My Eyes Want You More Than a Melody, you know that you've found a beautiful escape from reality. Everything feels very uplifting, right down to the very Paul McCartney-esque outro. You just can't skip it. Every single time, it warms the soul. Joji blew my mind when he dropped Run early this year. Picture the dream combo of mellow R&B with a big dose of smooth rock and roll to sail your memories of fractured love out to sea. It's a miracle come true. The guy keeps unfolding to reveal new layers of his talent rainbow, with Run being the perfect shade of maroon, capped off by a cosmic stars-aligning guitar solo. Lines, please, Fab? The Strokes gave us a reason to stand and applaud. The Strokes gave us a reason to stand and applaud with the finale to their comeback album, The New Abnormal. Ode to the Mets paints a harrowing tale of fame while fragments of regret, love, and acceptance hang in the air like dust particles in an anti-gravity machine. Julian Casablancas gives one of his most gripping vocal performances ever, too. It's bone-chilling, capturing humanity in a bottle, but also kind of releasing it like a dove in that mind-blowing outro. It's the last minute of the song that just rains down emotion like a damn monsoon. Pleasant critiques of the upper class come out in spades, as the British singer-songwriter Declan McKenna flexes his dry sense of humor on what I honestly think is his best song. The key to life on Earth doesn't just have Declan's charm, you can thank his backing band for the broad enigma of musicality. Everything captures feels quaint and proper, sipping a cup of tea in the sunshine, if you will, which directly and intentionally contradicts the message of the song. Really 
that wanna run it with the jewel runners. Go hellfire hot in a cool summer. It's a cold winter, baby, and a cruel summer. I suicide bomb in a blue hummer. And emerge out the fire, not a bruise on them. Bad news coming to sun, two sun. Treat beats like a wet dot chew on them. Got a short rope blue on them. Killer Mike and LP dropped some of the most important but equally thrilling art of the year on RTJ4, with the obvious standout being Walking in the Snow. Not only does this see the pair in the cut bodying bars and trading slick wordplay, they get in some devastating lines that relate directly to social injustice, including the murder of black people by police, and some references that are going to feel extremely timely, but it's even more devastating when you realize that those lines are about somebody else, but it just also happened to apply to say George Floyd and the many others that have lost their lives. The sizzling production consistently pulls out all the stops and Gangsta Boo is great on the hook. At the end of the day, my words won't do their words justice. Explore it for yourself. You need to experience this song, even if hip hop and rap aren't traditionally your thing. Talon Weeks is such a fantastic songwriter, which makes his additional music gifts all the more impressive. Leave Me Alone is so sassy with its takedowns, focusing on a big shot that no one knows, which, great phrasing, just smart enough to make you go, ah, burn, but vague enough to have the idiot savant singing along blissfully unaware. Disco flirtations can be heard as the guitar practically takes you on an entire theme park ride with how much movement it has. I don't know how, but they found me just lined up a very killer 80s influence moment with loads of synths coming in hot and these skippy drum performances from Ryan Seaman as Dallin continues punching through the fourth wall. I'm the baddest and I'm worth it. Give us a little bit, little bit on me, on my Rina Sawayama blends genres better than just about anyone I've ever heard, and Excess is the chef's kiss that combines early 2000s pop with nu metal. Let me run that by you again. This song combines 2000s pop with nu metal. That's fucking dope, dude. I don't know how Rina didn't conquer the industry sooner with this kind of wizardry. Flawless production greets your ears instantly. It's so easy to listen to over and over. Plus, you've got some unexpectedly heavy guitars tearing it up at key intervals. You just dance and headbang the night away as she sings her heart out and proves why she deserves to be way bigger than she is right now. When 99% of groups say, oh, we've taken a little bit from all of our other albums, it's normally a defense shield to keep their fan base satisfied. However, Genesis served as the opening song from this album, Ohms, and it's just fucking terrific in how much they actually pull from their other records and experiences. I hear Saturday Night Wrist, I hear Koi no Yokin, maybe even a bit of White Pony in the vocal booth from Chino. It's intoxicating. That nine string guitar just really whets the appetite, but I love the before we get to that cutting riffage, we have more of an ambient intro to keep the suspense building before they just absolutely bash our skulls in over the course of one five minute song. After what felt like an enormous wait between the single announcement and the actual release date, I had a lot of time to mull over what I thought a Haley Williams solo track would hit like. It hits different, that's for sure, but Simmer turned a recurring nightmare into a powerhouse of rage that confidently ushered in a new era for the Paramore frontwoman. Immersion is easy when you've got literal ear candy on the line. I'm talking about that minimalist sense of artistic expression, incredible vocal poise from Haley, and some really mysterious sounding bass and guitar. They managed to make this feel super fresh, like something that I haven't really heard before, which is really impressive and factors into this super high placement for me. Cinematic grandeur rules the airwave when Lightning Fields enters the arena. This is an extremely romantic song from the Killers. They've definitely dabbled there in the past, but this might be their most soaring accomplishment in that category. Brandon Flowers tells the tale of his parents through the lens of reality, knowing that love is flawed, but beyond that, how it's always worth fighting for in the long run, no matter what the cost. This song really speaks to the heart, and maybe part of that has to do with me being in love with my best friend, knowing what kind of life I want to build with her, but past my own bias towards the lyrics, they built a real 
really epic song with a soaring chorus that lifts my mood to the heavens every single time without fail. The bridge, Katie Lang, powerful instrumentation and a knockout performance from Flowers? This is peak form for the killers and we're nearly 20 years into their career. Capping off an intimate album with a slow-burning explosion is like seeing an eruption of fireworks in the sky after a depressing rainy day. Phoebe Bridgers won my heart in 2020, and I know the end sealed the deal permanently. Her voice drips with emotion, but also gets a much-needed boost of confidence as she mocks the landmarks she's passing by on this night drive into madness. I won't spoil the song for you if you haven't heard it, but the same goes for what I said about the final minute of Ode to the Mets, which was also an album closer. It brought me to tears because it's that damn perfect. The music is rich and beautiful, there's screams, there's laughter, there's so many voices and instruments floating around, and then it just kinda ends, kinda like life. Oh no, that got dark fast. Listen, it's kind of bleak, but it's also like a light at the end of the tunnel, so maybe keep chasing it. It gets better as it goes, and that ending is truly monumental. Certified classic destined to be played consistently for the next hundred years. You know it, you love it, you don't need me to tell you that you love it, and if you don't love it, check your poor taste in pop classics at the door and kindly hand over your resignation from the Grammy Academy because if you dislike this song, you must work for the Grammys because they're the only idiots on the planet that didn't. Take me to the lakes where all the poets went to die. I don't belong, and my beloved neither do you. Elegant wordplay is a rarity from a mainstream artist, so it's no surprise to find that I adore every square inch of the lakes. This was delegated to bonus track status on Folklore, which in a way is a modern tragedy because it's the best song on an already superb album, but it's also kind of nice to have this extra little treat that not everyone's gonna know about. I get overwhelmed with tears every time I play The Lakes. There's so many beautiful moments of imagery woven in that I can't help myself. She manages to take her modern world and flip it to the days of the poets of yesteryear, all while overcoming the negative odds and thriving in solidarity away from it all. Read along with the lyrics, it's basically poetry from Taylor's journal to our ears, and I'm still awestruck at how wonderful this extra track is. Fiona Apple's new magnum opus gave us Shamika, a gritty look back to her childhood to explore her strained relationship with women throughout her lifetime. Shamika is an actual person, a tough girl at her school in elementary school, I believe, that told Fiona she had potential, despite the fact that she was constantly getting bullied. Racing pianos instantly swept me off my feet and back into her world, slowly sprinkling in some of that custom percussion Fiona loves to create, along with some fascinating displays of artistry in regards to the way it was written and how she sounds vocally. Fiona doesn't just focus on her childhood, she talks about how it shaped or strained her approach and why it's important to re-examine these situations so blame isn't placed on the wrong people. Just a quick note before my heart starts beating out of my chest to gush over levitating, I have to clarify that this placement is for the original album version of the song, not the pointless remix with rapper DaBaby, which I absolutely refuse to listen to because this is already a perfect song and why would we mess with perfection? Okay, so where to begin? I guess I should start by saying that I'm a total sucker for pop music that makes use of organic instrumentation, and Dua Lipa pretty much just slayed that again and again all throughout future nostalgia. However, according to the artist herself, Levitating was the song that inspired her disco 80 synth pop endeavors for album 2, so it's not exactly a shock that that track is absolutely fucking mental. 
The beat sounds like a spring-loaded trampoline tossing about smoothly, with a rumbling bass line picking up steam and piling on the fun before Dua ties it all together with an out-of-this-world chorus that demands to be danced to dangerously. Throw caution to the wind. We deserve a break and we also deserve fantastic pop music to shake our asses to, to move around to, to sit in front of the computer to, whatever it is that you're looking for if you need to pick me up in these dark times, look no further and start levitating today. When I hit play on the Spanish Love Songs album Brave Faces Everyone for the first time, I was tearing up within the first 30 seconds, by a minute in they were actually starting to fall, and by the end of the song, I was just full on weeping. And that was before the pandemic hit, all the way back in February. Think about that! If you're not familiar with Spanish Love Songs, you're about to get a full on briefing. For fans of emo, alternative rock, and the Wonder Years, I can't put to words just how stunned you'll feel when you actually put this on for the first time. The words being sung come from a true place of desperation, and their vocalist Dylan Slocum sounds like he's on the brink of an emotional meltdown at all times, plus the music is straight flames, so they really give you an infinite amount of reasons to care. Routine pain, like I said, was hard to stomach even before this year was swallowed alive by a virus we have no control over. I don't talk about this a ton, and maybe I should talk about it more, but I battle some pretty intense depression and anxiety myself, and that has only intensified this year. But this song, to me, was kind of a catalyst to remember that there's so many other people out there struggling and battling every single day. And when I heard that line, there's so many great lines on here, but when I heard the specific line, I'm so sick of treading water, I just completely lost it. I felt touched by the entire album in a way that I'm not sure I've ever felt before. But this song, Routine Pain, comforted me first and on a very personal level. It's a phenomenal achievement for a massively underrated band, and for the longest time, it had the number one song position locked in. That is, until something else came along. And that, my friends, well, that something is right here. Stealing the crown in the final months of the year like a thief in the night, it's the new metal roller coaster Teardrops by Bring Me the Horizon all the way up at number one. I'm still not quite over just how flawless everything in this song is, but I'm getting to a point of acceptance. You see, Bring Me have been experimenting for years now, but to pull out the insanely good Linkin Park worship and still have it feel like your own thing too? I am speechless! Holy shit, this song is fucking amazing! Supercharged bass looms in the dark hallways of the track as Ollie Sykes begins to dismantle his own mind, including stressors, alcoholism, and love, with the latter of those being a pretty massive blow to the frontman's mental health when his former marriage quickly ended in divorce. I'm sure it was definitely a weight off of his shoulders, but the song, along with the dazzling music video, speaks largely to his love of his bandmates and the band at large, and how lost he'd be without them. Lyrically, the UK rockers missile strike the sweet spot between universal relatability and personal introspection, with so many lines serving as both personal demons surfacing and shout-along moments of catharsis for the listener. All of the bandmates seemed to lock into tunnel vision mode where all they could see was this monumental swing for the fences, and that way of thinking seems to have paid off tenfold as Teardrops gets catchier and catchier as it goes on, with electrifying drumming and wicked guitar meets early 2000s electronic tinge programming, practically serving as a musical eargasm in its own right. Bring Me the Horizon could not have built a better song for the 2020 landscape. And if I could speak briefly to the Linkin Park comparisons, I honestly do feel like the band would be proud of the sound that they've inspired, not just for Bring Me, but for everyone, and that includes the late Chester Bennington. R.I.P. Chester, your legacy lives on forever, and this song Teardrops is living proof of that. That's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed seeing my top 50 songs of 2020. If you did, then swiftly annihilate that like button to show your support. You'll want to subscribe, too, since I've got a lot of other year-end content on the way. If you missed out on any of that, then there's a playlist right here to catch up on all of those, or you can tap here to see my best songs list from last year. Thank you to all of my Patreon supporters, including Brandon Berenfield, Seth Kopish, Cleo, and Dayton Hamilton, and I'll be back soon for more on ARTV.